Hey there, this is Akshay Nadan and welcome back to the part 2 of Creo AI course. I hope till now you are enjoying and in the previous part, in the first part, we covered course introduction and introduction to RAD. In this part, part 2, we are going to cover an introduction to AI agents and we are also going to understand a React agent, reasoning plus action agents. Uh, so let's go ahead. Uh, I hope uh, in the last part you already understood this RAG. Now let's jump to an AI agent. So what exactly is an AI agent? So you understand how LLMs work, how they generate a response, right? Now that is not enough for us. We thought that, hey, if we have already built a brain which can generate responses, which is intelligent and it can take decisions, why not we also give that brain the power of hands, eyes, ears, uh, legs so that it can get all the tools and we can form a, a system like a human, right? What are these tools are helping us to do? Like my eyes are helping me to see, my ears are helping me to hear, my hands are helping me to pick a ball and throw, right? So whatever my brain is telling me to do, I can do it, but I can do it using these tools, right? Using these parts, organs that I've got. So we also thought that, hey, let's connect this LLM, which is the brain, the intelligence layer, with some tools, with some memory, with some knowledge, and with these actions which it can perform, and we can form a system like human, right? If today you ask LLM or ChatGPT to go ahead and book a meeting on Google Calendar for you, it might not be able to do, right? Because that is just an LLM, GPT-40, it's just the brain. It can tell me that, hey, for that booking, you have to do these steps, but it will not do it on its own. For that, if we want to do, if we want it to do, then we have to connect Google Calendar with it. We have to connect Google Meet with it, right? We have to connect Gmail with it so that it can also send invites, right? So for that, we can, we can call that system as an AI agent. So an AI agent uh, can read a file system. Let's say uh, this is the prompt, right? Right? Read the medical reports in a folder patients. Let's say in my system, in my computer, I have a folder called patients, right? In that patients folder, I have some medical reports of the patients, right? Frame a prescription for each patient, right? So it has to read all the medical records for every patient and it has to create a prescription. So I'm creating a medical AI agent. Access my calendar and book a meeting with each patient and mail them the invite with the prescription. So first of all, it should be able to read the medical records. It should be able to frame a prescription. Then it should be able to access my calendar, book a meeting, and then mail them the invites. So you can see multiple actions need to be performed over here, not just a simple generation or an inference, right? So I have an AI agent. It will have access to the memory so that it can remember that, hey, till now it has uh, sent invites to these patients. So it, it, will, it will have it will just maintain a state. It will just maintain the memory. And we are going to do it in the practical. This is the prompt template that we have got. A simple prompt. First of all, it has access to reading the file system. So number one action that it can perform. It can read the file system. Okay. Then it can write a prescription. This is just like a prescription. This is just like an inference. But it will get the context of the medical report of the patient which it can only get if we have access to reading the file system. Okay, so first of all, it has to go read the file system, uh, then get the medical report of one patient, uh, create a prescription using simple generation, then access Google Calendar, the tool which we have already provided to this AI agent, book a slot, so it has to also check if I am available during that slot or not, right? So check my Google Calendar, book a slot, send a mail. So all of these tools are provided to this AI agent, plus it has access to LLM, plus it has access to the memory. This whole system is called an AI agent. Okay, that's how AI agents can work. And then they are capable of doing end-to-end -end task, not just the generation. Okay, I hope this is helpful. Okay, the next thing is, what is a React agent then? React agents are nothing but they are just a system or that's how we can think of how agents should work. We know our end goal. We have to build this medical agent. We, we can see this architecture, right? But technically or on the research side, 
how these agents are working so first of all on a very high level this is again high level you have a prompt right the process is starting from here right first of all the whole ai agent here you don't have like llm or tools this is the complete ai agent architecture first of all ai agent with the help of llm with the help of the intelligence layer will do the thought process it will think what it needs to do okay because it has access to multiple tools it has like it can have like 100 tools also right so it will think for a minute what it should do like a normal human being it should it make a tool call should it do just a simple llm generation should it fetch some data from the memory what it should do so here the thought process is happening based on the thought process result it will perform an action that action can be a tool call it can be an llm call it can be memory fetching right it can be anything so based on the thought process then it does the takes the action so this is the second step the next thing is observation now as soon as you perform an action there will be some result in the environment this is the complete environment in which ai agent or the react agent is working okay so as soon as you perform an action let's say you uh, fetch the google calendar of the person as soon as you fetch it you get the google calendar so you need to observe that result right you have to observe that inference you have to observe the output based on the observation you again think hey is my task over llm is taking the decision right llm has everything in front of it llm can see everything right now llm has to take the decision is my task over uh, is the uh, mail being sent to the patient if yes okay task over come out and done if not till now just the calendar is fetched uh, prescription is not framed meeting invite is not sent booking is not done everything is pending most of the tasks are pending so for that again you go to the thought process so that it can think of the next step that's how the cycle repeats till it finishes the task okay so that's how reasoning over here the reasoning is happening and then the action is being taken over here the action is being taken so that's how react agents work now in the next part we will be coding a simple react agent without using cri or without using any framework from the next parts we will be using these frameworks because they help us a lot because you don't have to code everything on your own you get proper places you get proper structure and you can build your ai agents so i hope you enjoyed this video till the next video keep coding keep innovating and thanks a lot